Hello, am I on? Am I on? Yes, I'm on. Hi, this is Emily. I am Ellie. I also go by T Girl Angel. I am male to female transgender. That's not a secret. I've been doing quite a while now videos uh, documenting uh, somewhat my transition from male to female and um, I'm not really uh, an expert at the process of transitioning. In fact, I'm one of the laggers in transitioning because I am so far behind in what I truly wish to do. Um, I want people to know that living, feeling different is not all that unusual. In fact, I would say a good percentage of people have something that uh, they feel uh, uh, uncomfortable about. For me, it just happens to be my gender identity. I've always identified as a female. I can go back as early as the age of three when I knew deep down in my heart that I wanted to wear girls' clothes and I would s sneak into my sister's drawers uh, to wear any kind of girlish thing I could find and I particularly enjoyed wearing dresses um, I've always had a fascination with wearing dresses um, I've always felt very happy in a dress very comfortable in a dress um, and I don't see there any I don't see there being anything wrong with uh, being different. Uh, what I do see what's wrong is that people who are different being bullied, teased to the point where it could result in that individual who's struggling with their gender identity or their sexual identity uh, possibly hurting themselves, or even worse, killing themselves. Um, it is a uh, epidemic that we are losing lots of transgender youth to suicide. Uh, and I think that we need to uh, make it known, especially to the politicians, that we cannot legislate hate in this country. We cannot be anti-LGBT. We have to be all-encompassing. We must enact legislation that provides help to those who identify differently. We cannot condemn people by their sexual preference, by their gender identity. That is wrong. And that is why I am so opposed to Donald Trump and his running mate, Mike Pence, because they do not care one iota about the LGBT community and Hillary Clinton not only in her debate conversations but during her Democratic convention made it known that she is pro LGBT and she also 
respects disabled people. So, given the choices that we have, someone who's an egomaniac, who doesn't give a damn about anybody but himself, who thinks he single-handedly can fix this country, or someone who believes we come together and join forces in an effort to bring peace and also not to discriminate, not to offend others by their sexual preference, their gender identity, or their religious affiliation. We must be strong enough and we must be vigilant. We as a society have to be able to allow diversity. We cannot condemn people who are different. It took me a long, long time to become the true person that I am. And I have been struggling all my life. I tried my best to live the life that I was born into. And I thought that everything I did was considered complete with th well thought out processes and sincerity. I never meant to do anything to hurt people. The problem is when you feel at odds with your own prob body and how you perceive yourself. No matter how hard you fight, eventually it will catch up with you. I tried to live a life as a male and I succeeded if that's how you want to look at it for 50 years, five decades. Things happened in my life, though, that affected my mental well-being and propelled me to rethink my life and my situation. I am a father, a husband, a son, a brother, a friend, but I'm also transgender. I identify as a woman. I always have, and I shouldn't be criticized for it. I shouldn't be teased for it. I shouldn't be bullied for it. I am a person with feelings. And I am active in YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and other social media forms of communication. And I have been offended at times. Not often, but at times on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram channel where people make fun of my situation and I have a right to report them, which I do. Every time I see a comment that I feel is harassment, 
that affects me personally, I report the person with the comment because I have a right to fight off being bullied. I refuse to be bullied and I refuse to go back into the closet. I am who I am and I am living my life the way I feel I should and no one has a right to tell me otherwise and I will fight for my right to be who I am. There are things that I need to do still in my transition. I feel very at odds at times, even though I am transitioning, I am on hormones, but I feel I need to do surgery. And surgery is difficult for someone like me because I'm not in any way able to from a financial point of view and I have no idea if I will be approved through insurance and I don't know if I would even find a doctor that would approve my insurance but I am struggling because I do wish to do surgery. I have friends who are transgender. Some are pre-op like me. Pre-op means that I have not gone through the surgical procedure to effectively alter my body to present more as a female. Post-op, obviously, is when the individual, in the case of a male to female, has had the surgical procedures. There are certain procedures. The basic one for me that I would prefer to do would be the surgery that's considered SRS, GRS, sex reassignment surgery, gender reassignment surgery, gender confirming surgery, uh, sex change operation. And what that really means is they uh, do a procedure where it's, I guess, in multiple stages. First, they remove the testes, testicles, which is the source for testosterone and the sperm. And in addition to that operation, they do uh, a, a further surgical procedure to invert the flap of the penile shaft and they try to accurately form it into the shape of a woman's vagina. And after the surgical procedure, the transgender woman who is now post-op must learn to take aftercare seriously. There are things she must do to keep that from closing. So dilation is a very important aspect of the surgical post-op. I want to be post-op 
they also have to reorient the way you go to the bathroom. So you will have your urethra positioned in the sense where you would now pee just like a female. I've always peed like a woman, but I have had to you know, I just basically just sit down and do what I have to do. But I want to be happy. And I know in my heart that I am transgender and I cannot be blamed for that. It is what it is. I am who I am and I cannot change that and I don't want to change that. I want to change my body to be more consistent to my body's perception in my mind. In my mind, I am a female, but my body betrays that. The hormones I take have helped me in my transition. So I am very happy about that. But it's taking time. When I see myself in the mirror, I'll be honest. As much as I criticize myself, I must say that I do feel when I look at myself in the mirror that I do see a female. Though I don't speak like a female in the sense of my voice sounding more masculine, I am able to go out and speak to people as I present myself and I am treated like a female as I wish to be. There are on occasion instances, and I have no idea why, where someone out of the blue will say, sir, usually on a telephone, but strangely in public, even if I have a hair bow, I don't know why, but they'll say, sir, and I have no clue why, because no man wears this kind of an outfit, especially with a hair bow. So I don't understand, but that's very rare. But it has happened on occasion, a couple of times, not, not occasionally, just a couple of times. But still, it affected my psyche because it made me doubt my femininity and I am very feminine and proud to admit that and I'm very proud to admit that I'm transgender and I'm proud to admit that I'm a Hillary Clinton supporter and I will work on her campaign and I will try my best to do everything I can for my son who's autistic and I have to fight not only my own struggles as a transgender woman, but my mental illness as a bipolar sufferer. I have to be strong. And that's why I go to doctors and therapists and psychiatrists. And I need to continue to do that. And I try my best to write to help me cope. That's the best I can do.
I love you guys. Bye, Emily.